Hey art nerds, today we are reviewing the Master's Touch alcohol markers. These are Hobby Lobby brand alcohol markers. You guys may remember these from my Hobby Lobby gift card guide. I picked up about five of them. So we're going to be reviewing them and then we're going to be doing a five color art challenge today. And I'm going to be comparing these markers to some of the popular other store brand or very affordable markers that are out on the market. So make sure you watch through the whole video so you can catch the five color challenge at the end. This is a little sneak peek of the art that we're going to be making and I'm going to walk you through how to get the most out of a really limited selection of markers. So we're going to start with our review. This is an, an unbox and swatch since I picked these up open stock at Hobby Lobby. They were $5 each and Hobby Lobby was having a 50% off sale on their Master's Touch products. The reason I picked these up is because I noticed that the marker body looks very similar to other markers I reviewed here on this channel. So check the description below for links to those. And when I uncapped them, I was very pleasantly surprised by what I saw. So you guys might think these look a lot like the Milo Art markers, the Milo Pro markers, or the Shuttle Art markers. You might even think these look like the Color It markers. And that's because these markers use the same body, complete with the nubby caps as those markers. The difference is the foam rubber nib on these actually seems to be better than even the Milo Pro markers. So I was really excited to give these a try. Another difference is these are available in smaller sets like sets of five, but they're also available open stock. So if you own the Milo Art, the Milo Pro, the Color It markers, or the Shuttle, it mar Shuttle Art markers, and you're looking to replace colors or you're looking to add colors to your collection, these could be a good pick for you. They are twin tipped with a brush tip on one side, a chisel tip on the other, and the caps post on the back. The body screening is pretty minimal. It says which end is the brush, which is end is the chisel, and it has a gray color on the brush tip end. I want to compare these today to the Artist Love markers, both the old body and the new body, the Milo Art, the Milo Pro, the Blick Studio brush markers, a Copic Sketch, and the Color It markers. So I have all of the markers uncapped here. You guys can see that almost all of the markers in this lineup have a color number and a color name. And the Shuttle Art, Milo Art, Milo Pro, and Master's Touch all seem to be using the co same color system, which makes me think they are perhaps buying these from the same manufacturer in China. Zooming on in so you guys can get a better look. The Master's Touch markers feature triangular bodies like the Artist Loft markers, the Milo Pro markers, the Milo markers, and the Color It markers. They are the same size as the Milo Art, Shuttle Art, and Color It markers. They are a little bit larger than the Blick Studio markers and the Copic Sketch markers. Now, Hobby Lobby also sells Prismacolor markers and Copic markers, but they are very expensive for what you're getting. So I would highly recommend you not buy those markers at Hobby Lobby. And if you are really dead set on buying markers from Hobby Lobby, I would highly recommend you use a coupon. That is the way you're going to get the best savings. Now, these markers are not refillable and they don't have replaceable brush tips. Now, you can see that nice, juicy foam rubber nib way at the top all the way to the left. That is the Master's Touch marker. And of the Master's Touch products that I have reviewed, these are the best and they're the only ones that I can actually recommend. I would say everything else I've tried with the exception of their mixed media sketchbook is a big skip. Speaking of their mixed media sketchbook, we're going to be doing our swatching and our challenge in that sketchbook today. So I'm going to give you some comments on that as well. Now compared to the Artist Loft markers, so uh, Master's Touch is Hobby Lobby store brand. Artist Loft is Michael's store brand. So I would say they're direct competition. Artist Loft has switched out the 
fiber tip markers that they were selling for foam rubber tip markers that perform a lot better. The Artist Loft markers do not age well. I have several of them that I use as convention markers and the colors get weird over time and they dry out really quickly. So I cannot recommend the Artist Loft markers as an addition to your collection. They could be a great way to get started, but I would not rely on them to last the test of time. I can't speak to the Master's Touch markers, the Shuttle Art markers, the Milo Art markers, the Milo Pro markers, or the Color It markers as of yet because I haven't had any of them long enough. And I've already given the St. Charles Parish Library System my Milo Art markers, my Milo Pro markers, and my Color It markers because I feel like they can put those to great use and those are going to help a lot of people. So I'm only holding on to a handful of the Master's Touch markers because those were in colors that I don't already have. Now, when I was selecting these markers, I basically just grabbed them for pretty colors that kind of sort of work together. I wasn't looking to do a full field test the way I normally would where I might buy 10 markers and try to do something more rendered out. So this is a cap comparison. At the top, all the way over, is the Master's Touch, then the two Milo markers. Here we have the Master's Touch, the two Artist Love markers, and the Blick Studio Brush marker. I've included the Blick Studio Brush marker because those are Dick Blick's store brand alcohol marker, and they're still my favorite affordable, accessible alcohol marker. They're refillable, you can replace the brush nibs, and you can order or buy them from Dick Blick. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. So here is our same body comparison of the Master's Touch, the Milo markers, and the Color It marker. Um, the Shuttle Art markers use the same body as well, but like the Color It markers, they are bullet tips. And I have reviews for all of those markers here on this channel, and I'll link those in the description below. I also have a lot of alcohol marker tutorials for Copic as well as for other brands. So if you're interested in learning how to use alcohol markers or you were given alcohol markers for Christmas, stick around. This channel is a great place to keep an eye out. And look out for my alcohol, alcohol markers playlist here on this channel. So here's a lineup of all the different store brand markers. At the top is the Master's Touch, the two Artist Loft, and the Blick Studio Brush markers. I would say in terms of handling, the Master's Touch is fairly similar to the Blick Studio Brush marker. But to my knowledge and from what I saw in store, they're not refillable and they don't have replaceable nibs. So in terms of something that's going to last you a long time, that's going to be reusable, the Master's Touch markers are not going to fill that niche. Recapping all of these markers is fairly simple. You want to push the caps down until you hear a solid click. That will let you know that the markers have been sealed. You want to make sure you cap your alcohol markers appropriately because they utilize alcohol solvents. And I have more videos on this channel where I talk more in depth about alcohol markers and what make them special. As well as I have some posts over at natosoup.blogspot.com that talk about the same topic. Anyway, they evaporate more quickly than water-based markers because they use alcohol as a solvent and alcohol evaporates in that atmosphere more quickly. So if you don't cap them properly, they're very likely to become dried out and unless you're willing to spend some time fixing them, ruined. I do have videos on this channel as well on how to revive dead alcohol markers that I would recommend you guys check out. So I'm just kind of showing you guys the different brush tips versus the different chisel tips that each of these markers have. When it comes to chisel tips, there's not really a lot to talk about. The only chisel tip that I've ever noticed to be just stand out different from the rest are Prismacolor's unique tri-tip chisel tips and those only come on their chisel and bullet nib markers. Their brush tip markers have a bullet nib on the other end so if you're buying their brush tip markers you'll never really see that tri -t chisel tip. Most of these markers are fairly larger markers so if you um, struggle to use larger art supplies they may be more difficult to use. Sometimes it can be difficult to remove the caps on these markers because the bodies are fairly slick and it's hard to get a good grip on the caps. The nubby caps do help somewhat but they don't completely solve the problem. I also want to point out that alcohol ink is not archival. It is a dye based alcohol based ink so it is going to be light fugitive and some people have reported that alcohol markers do tend to eat up the paper over time since alcohol is acidic. 
I personally, when it comes to nicer alcohol markers like Copic and even the Blick Studio markers, have not had that problem, but I do not ever store any marker art in direct sunlight. I protect it in UV bags and I keep my hands clean when I'm working. I did want to disclose that for you guys because I have a feeling this video is going to attract people who are kind of new to alcohol markers, so I want to share as much info as possible with you guys. Now, the only marker in this lineup that isn't a brush tip marker is the Color It markers. And I also want to disclose that Milo sent me the Milo Pro markers to review and Color It sent me the Color It markers to review. All other markers in this lineup were purchased by me out of pocket. So here we have the Master's Touch marker. Now we have the older style Artist Loft marker. This has the fiber tip. And if you're shopping at Michael's and you're buying Artist Loft markers, I do want to caution you to be careful to check the markers if you can, the open stock markers you can uncap. Check those, make sure the brushes aren't ruined, make sure they're not dry, make sure they haven't been allowed to dry, and make sure you're actually getting the much nicer foam tip. I do know that some of the sets still have the foam, I mean the, uh, fiber tip, the felt tips that are more prone to fraying, they're more prone to becoming ruined. So I would recommend you avoid the sets for now. The Blick Studio brushes are smaller. They're much more comparable to Copic sketches. They do have a smaller Copic uh, color range than Copic sketch. It's like 98 colors as compared to 120 colors. But I think they have a lot to offer people who are interested in getting into alcohol markers. They last a really long time, and since the refills and replacement nibs are available, they're an excellent addition to a marker collection. The Milo Art markers have the fiber tips that we talked about. I'm not a big fan of the fiber tips. The Milo Pro markers have the foam tips that I vastly prefer, so I would recommend if you're getting the Milo markers that you go for the Pro markers over the Art markers. The Copic Sketch marker, that's kind of my baseline comparison. That's the one I talk about the most because people are more familiar with those just because that's what a lot of other artists use. So now we're going to swatch the colors that I picked up in the Master's Touch collection. Uh, this is not indicative of their range. It is not indicative of anything other than my taste. I picked up a skin color. I picked up a purple. I picked up a fluorescent green. I picked up an aqua blue and I picked up kind of a cherry blossom pink. I just picked colors that appealed to me. I didn't spend a lot of time swatching. While I was in the store though, I did make sure that all the colors I picked worked. None of them were leaky and none of them had broken brushes or uh, chisel nibs. So I'm going to go ahead and begin swatching these in the Master's Touch Mixed Media Sketchbook. This sketchbook has a bit more of a surface tooth to it, more of a texture than the Strathmore Mixed Media or the Canson Mixed Media. It It's nice in that it doesn't bleed through, and if you're looking for a mixed media paper that's good with color pencils, this could be a good option for you. I'm swatching both the brush tip and the chisel tip just in case there are color differences. And you did see with the purple that I just swatched, there are some color differences there. So the chisel tip is actually kind of a different color purple than the brush tip, which is pretty unusual. That's common for water-based markers where the pigments may not reach both ends, but it's very unusual for alcohol markers like this. Something else I want to point out if you're new to alcohol markers is store your alcohol markers horizontally. This way it can get to both ends. This is going to ensure that your markers last a lot longer. They don't dry out as quickly. It's not a huge deal if you store your markers vertically. That's standing up on end for short periods of time. But really the best way to store your markers is with them laying flat. And I noticed that Hobby Lobby actually stored these markers appropriately in store. So I do want to give them some kudos to that. Now the really, really light, I think it's like skin white I picked up. It's a really, really light peach color. It's actually more fluorescent in real life. So that's something you're going to want to kind of be careful of. And when I teach younger artists how to use alcohol markers, that's usually their number one complaint is that a lot of these sets include a skin tone or a Caucasian, a light skin tone that's really more like a fluorescent orange than it is like a skin tone. So next we're going to do a little bit of comparison. I've already gone ahead and I swatched the Master's Touch, the brush and chisel. Next we are swatching the Artist Loft marker and this is the newer body one with the foam rubber tip. So we're kind of doing apples to apples here.
And generally, I find that the foam rubber brush tips can deliver more color more quickly, and you're going to have less problems, fewer problems with streaking. Next, we're going to do the Milo Pro Art Marker. This also has the foam rubber tip. I find that the foam rubber tips on the Milo Pro Markers are a little bit uh, more rubbery. They're more like a rubber band. There's a little bit more friction between the nib and the paper. They don't have quite as much ink flow. So now we've got another one of the Master's Touch Markers. We're going to do an alcohol solvent comparison. So one of the cool things about alcohol markers is that you can use colorless blenders or rubbing alcohol as a solvent. So we're going to test reactivity here. And we're starting with the Copic Sketch. So we're starting with Copic Solvent. And I found that, spoiler, I found that all three solvents used were very reactive with these markers. Now, Master's Touch does offer a colorless blender. I didn't pick it up because I have plenty of them. So next, we're using the Artist Loft colorless blender. But this sort of test tells us how compatible these markers will be with other alcohol markers on the market. And finally, I'm using one of the Milo Pro colorless blenders to test it out. So we had good reactivity with all three markers. What you're looking for is you're looking for it to light in the color to push the color to the back of the paper. So alcohol markers don't really layer the way water-based markers or watercolor markers might layer. What they do is they push prior colors to the back of the paper. So now I'm just going to do a quick blending test with the five colors that I selected. I don't expect to get a perfect blend. This is also a good way to figure out if layering colors will achieve or result in new colors that you might use. Like between the teal and the purple, we got a really nice dark blue. And if you want to blend a color out, if you want a softer ombre, tran ombre transition, you blend out with the color prior as you saw me do with the teal blue. If we were to blend this purple with the pink, we would blend more with the pink. So you kind of want to work with the lighter color as the blender. You don't necessarily want to use the colorless blender because what that's going to do is that's going to introduce clear solvent and it's going to lighten both colors rather than making a softer transition between the two colors. And then finally, we have our skin tone, that peachy color here. And just keep in mind, in real life, it's really much more fluorescent than it appears on camera. And then finally, we're going to use our fluorescent green, since it was kind of the odd man out. And it's really more of a spring or a leaf green than kind of the blue green color that you see here. So here's all five of the selected colors swatched. There was quite a color range at Hobby Lobby, but at about $3 a pop, I didn't want to invest in all the colors that they had, nor did I want to invest in a whole lot of colors. I just wanted enough that I could review these and give you guys an impression of whether or not they're worth your time and money. And then here's everything labeled out by color numbers or products used. Since we have such a small selection of colors, I thought it would be fun to do a five color challenge with you guys and kind of combine the review with the field test. I don't normally do this because usually the review takes up a lot of time and then the field test takes up a lot of time. So I'm going to be using a Copic Colorless Blender to blend out my color and I'm beginning with our blue green and using that to add shadow to the tops of the eyes. Now since we're working with a limited color palette and we only have one skin tone, I'm going to make the most of it. So I'm utilizing the white of the paper as kind of our base highlight. So I'm applying that super light skin tone color and then blending that out using the colorless blender. The sketch was completed using a pink color Eno colored lead, but you can use the colored lead of your choice. Color Eno is just my preference. I also went ahead and added that sort of light cherry blossom pink to her cheeks to begin with the blush. Now I'm leaving a lot of white highlight here, and that's really just making the most of the colors that we do have and creating a sense of depth. But since we're not doing a uniform fill 
of skin tone like I normally would in some of my other tutorials. I'm also using that fluorescent green for her eyes and you guys might notice when we zoom in that the blue green with the green makes her a really nice green color. I'm also using that cherry blossom pink on her lips and the bottom lip just to kind of create a full lip effect. When my first layer of skin tone dried, I went in with a second layer. When it comes to alcohol markers, you have a couple of options in terms of blending and color development. If you go wet into wet, as in you apply your new layer while the, still, the other layer is still cold and wet on the page, you're going to get a softer diffuse blend. If you give it time to dry so that you can no longer feel that alcohol on the page, you're going to get a sharper transition of color, which is really useful for building up forms. So I'm using that teal blue for her hair and I'm leaving the white of the paper as our highlight. Now you guys can go back in with color pencils or you can go in with white gouache or Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white and add white highlights if you wish but it's really easy to leave white highlights if you're using a brush marker that has a really nice brush and the Masters Touch markers do have a really nice brush. It's actually a little bit disappointing because I hate promoting Hobby Lobby and I don't approve of a lot of how they do things. So it's really sad that they actually have an alcohol marker that I really like. But I'm reviewing these because I realize that a lot of people, Hobby Lobby is what you guys have. It's what's available. When I was growing up, Hobby Lobby was one of my very few limited options in terms of buying art supplies. So I went with what I had. So I'm not shaming anyone who chooses to give their business to Hobby Lobby. I am encouraging Hobby Lobby to reconsider their politics. They might have a larger cu customer base. So for her hair, I'm actually using fairly long brush strokes and allowing the brush to do the majority of the work. I'm going to give that a chance to dry. And then I'm going in with the purple and I'm coloring in her headband and the ribbons at the bottom. And I'm utilizing very similar brush strokes for that as well, leaving the white of the paper as our highlight. So once the first layer on the hair had a chance to dry, I'm going in with a second layer and this is going to allow us to build up more contrast and build up more color as you guys can see here. When you're working with a really limited palette of colors, the challenge is to get as many layers as possible out of each color and to mix colors so that you can achieve more depth of color than you would if you just use the colors on their own. So for the surrounding flowers, I want them to be little purple flowers and then larger cherry blossoms. In the center of each little purple flower, I'm applying some of the blue. And then for the cherry blossoms, I'm filling them in with pink up into the, not like halfway mark for each petal, and then blending that out using the Copic Colorless Blender. And that's going to give us a really soft, diffused pink. And I'm working on that one flower petal, or rather one flower at a time. I'm using a similar technique with the purple flowers, using the colorless blender to blend these out. Now you could use any brand colorless blender that you like. You could use the Artist Loft, you could use the Milo Pro Art, or you could use the Master's Touch colorless blender.
Once I finish with the flowers, I'm going to add another layer to the hair using that teal blue color. So with Copics, I can usually get about three layers of color, particularly on, wow, that I think I added an extra least syllable in there, particularly on very thirsty papers like this mixed media paper here. Now, I really like thirsty papers because I can get smoother blends and I can get more layers. I can build up colors more, but some people prefer to work on smooth marker papers and find that thirsty papers like this drain their markers too quickly. So this is gonna be something you kind of figure out as you go along. Once I finished adding another layer to the hair, keeping in mind that I, add less to each layer and that helps me build up contrast i added more pink to the center of each cherry blossom now for the cherry blossom leaves i'm applying the teal blue as a base color and then i'm going to apply the fluorescent green on top of it and what this is going to give me is it's going to give me kind of a nice middle green color as you'll see in a moment for right now, I'm adding a little bit of that fluorescent green to the pollen on our cherry blossoms since I didn't pick up a yellow. I'm also using the green as is on the leaves surrounding the little purple flowers. So what we end up with is two very different shades of green. So the marker part of this challenge is over. I'm going to ink this next, and I'm using a Sakura Pigma FB brush pen, but if you ink after you apply the marker, you don't have to worry about marker compatibility. You can ink with whatever you want. If you wanted to ink very softly with ballpoint pens, you could do that. You could ink it with India ink. You could ink it with, some, with an ink that's not alcohol marker safe. So by changing up your art order of operations, it really kind of frees you up to use the supplies that you want to use.
once I finished inking this piece, I decided it was time to add in some additional white highlights. So I'm going to use white gouache for this, but you guys can use white gel pen. You can use thickly mixed white watercolor. You can use white acrylics anything you're comfortable with using and I'm using a really small synthetic brush this is a Cotman brush and I'm applying the white both for the highlight and then around the back where the light would be less likely to hit and that's going to add a more three-dimensional effect So I actually kind of like the Master's Touch alcohol markers. These aren't bad. I think, in fact, I prefer them to the Artist Loft markers. These are very, they have very flexible foam rubber tips. You can really cover a lot of area. They're very juicy alcohol markers, so they're not already dry. They're not already starting to die on you. I'm just pretty pleased with the quality of these markers. Unfortunately, you can only get these through Hobby Lobby, and I don't know if other countries have their own Hobby Lobby, so your mileage may vary in this review. I live in the United States, and these markers were purchased while I was in Harahan, Louisiana, visiting family for Christmas, so your Hobby Lobby may or may not even have these markers. All in all, though, I was pretty satisfied with how these markers handled, and I hope that this has opened your eyes to what different stores have to offer, and I hope this has helped you find some affordable alcohol markers. Now, I will highly recommend that you only buy these Master's Touch markers when you have a sale coupon or when they're having a sale at Hobby Lobby. I don't think $5.99 is a very good price, and I think the Blick Studio Brush markers are a better choice if you're looking for affordable alcohol markers. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful, useful, and informative, and I hope to see you guys again really soon. Bye guys!